Aheya basham yashaya rarak. Shabbat shalom barakata. Kwam yasharao. Blessings unto you. Rise, O Israel. Welcome to Word War 3. Our reference today will be Hosea chapter 7, verse 16. And this message will be entitled Gentile, meaning nations, Gentile producers. Now, what is a producer? In your dictionaries, you'll see that a producer is a person responsible for financial or managerial aspects of whatever it is that they're making or doing, you know, like a movie or, you know, a stage play or in charge of a banking institute, a financial institute, you know, things of that matter. You know, they're in charge of it. They're the producers. And similar words to that would be an impresario or a manager, an administrator, a promoter or regisseur. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because when you look at television, you're going to see or movies for that matter, you're going to see uh, the producers produce movies that are made in Egypt with white people as portraying, portraying the actors and representing Egypt as, you know, um, ancient Egypt being white or being European. And when you, when the archeologists go there, they dig up, you know, artifacts and writings on the walls and pictures on the walls of Negro people. Like they're not finding you know, what Hollywood tells you. They're not finding the Hollywood version. They're actually finding black people, black statues, as bright as day, the Sphinx, uh, which I forget at the moment the proper name of the Sphinx. Somebody help me out later. But the, the Sphinx is overtly a Negro face. But they're telling you that the ancient Egyptians were were uh, European people, excuse me. So these producers, and we know today that, you know, a lot of the Jewish people are in charge of many of the things that are going on in this producer workshop activity, such as the World Bank. Right now we're suffering in this coronal, coronavirus issue, you know, and the World Bank... With all the money in the world, World Bank or the monetary fund or whatever they want to call themselves at certain points in time, you know, we have this global issue going on, but there's no help. We have to fend for ourselves, you know, some type of thing. But anyhow, going on with this, um, we'll read in the Babylonian temp to Talmud. Or possibly the Jewish Talmud and the, in their Pesachim or Pesachim uh, chapter 87a, it says that Hosea is the greatest of all the prophets being first, the first God spoke to during that time. And in their descending order, they have in the, this Talmud uh, Pesachim. Peshachim 87a, it says that Hosea was first, Isaiah was second, Amos was third, and Michael was fourth. Now, we're going to speak on, uh, on Hosea because Isaiah, Isaiah and Amos, we've already mentioned in our previous works that Isaiah and Amos, they already described that the Hebrew Israelites of that time went into Africa. Now, Hosea, for that matter, Hosea is going to say the same thing. We'll read you. We'll read you second Ezra chapter six, verse 56. And this is out of the apocryphal books, which meaning the hidden because Christianity, they don't want this book to be known. They hide it. So as again, here's quoting from second Ezra six fifty six. As for the other people, which also came from Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle. And has liking the abundance of them unto the drop, unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. This is how the God of the Israelites, 
the God of Israel thinks of other nations. And you say, wow, well, that's that's an apocryphal book. I don't I don't subscribe or I don't read the apocryphal book because I'm a Christian. OK, well, let's go to the book of Isaiah. And guess what? He's going to say the very exact same thing. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. All nations, quote, all nations before him are as nothing. This is Isaiah. All nations before him are as nothing. They are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. This is Isaiah confirming the same thing that second Ezra is saying in chapter six, verse 56. Again, that's Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. And we go on, if we go on into Hosea, chapter 8, 12, is going to say the same, you know, is going to pretty much say the same thing. You know, um, if we go, I, okay, Hosea chapter 8, 12, Isaiah chapter 18, verse 1, you know, he's saying, he's literally saying, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, Zephaniah 3, chapter 10, he says, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, Ethiopia, they keep pointing to Africa. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, this is your Messiah. This is your Messiah saying, do not go. He's not just saying it. He's commanding the disciples who are at this time, he's talking to his his chosen apostles, because he chose, he picked them personally. He said, do not go in the way, in the path of the Gentiles, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So this is a commandment. But Christians, they say there's a great commission of Jesus Christ to go out to the world and preach the gospel to everybody. No, Jesus is telling him, them to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Even, uh, in another verse, he says, I come not before the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So this is confirmation of the Old Testament. You have a old you have the Old Testament. Nowhere in the Old Testament are they talking about Christians? Nowhere in the Old Testament. They're saying, hey, look, our descendants are jacked up. Hey, look, Israel right now in the Old Testament, they're saying, Look, Israel, we we as a nation are jacked up right now. And later on, our descendants are going to be jacked up because we jacked up. That's what they're saying in the Old Testament. And when you come to the New Testament, you have a translation of things. Everything is written in Greek. That means when something is translation, translated or transliterated, that means that there has been a change to the system. So if there is a change in any of it, the Bible says that any change in the in the original language, any change of the Bible is sin. So you're looking at the New Testament in translation. These people are saying the very same thing that their ancestors said, but you're reading it in Greek. And again, when we look at Zephaniah chapter three, verse 10, when he says beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, three verses later, he says the remnant of Israel will not lie. The remnant of Israel will not lie. So if the remnant of Israel won't lie, you know, you got people today calling themselves Jews, calling themselves the descendants of the ancient Israelites, and they're showing you pictures they're producing the, these graphic material saying that the Israelites were white people. Not only that, you got one of their descendants, one of these Ashkenazi Jews, who created the whole church of Satan. Uh, Anton LaVey, if that's his uh, name, an Ashkenazi Jew created the, the church of Satan in California. And again, let's touch on two people real quick. We got King Wadim Arad in the early uh, 1300s. He sent 30 ambassadors to, to Europe, to Italy, I believe. 
And they were talking about Prester John. And Prester John, this letter of Prester John, and Prester John was telling the Europeans, hey, there's some Hebrews down here. There's some Israelites down here in Africa. In Africa. And this is this Prester John, he was known as the king of Abyssinia. At the time, it was called Abyssinia. They call it Ethiopia today. And Ethiopia, the, the Ethiopia today is bordered off by the people who control it today. But Abyssinia, there was no border that anybody can think of today that say, OK, this is Abyssinia. Um, and again, this Ethiopia was called the Oriental or the East of the Roman Empire. When they when the Romans conquered, they called it Oriental, the East. Today, when you when you call it Oriental, excuse me, when you call a Eastern Asian a Oriental, they get upset because they know that they are not Oriental. You know, it's a derogatory term. That's just like calling a white person, hey nigga. And they look at you like, well, why are you calling me a nigga? You know, <laughs> I'm not I'm white. You know, that's what, how they look at it. OK, well, that's what's happening here. And again, the reason why this is happening, because the Europeans of that time didn't know Africa. They did not know Africa. You know, again, around the same time, uh, uh, Mansa Musa was uh, in charge of West Africa. You had again, you had Prester John in East Africa. You had Mansa Musa in West Africa. And, and even uh, Leo Scipi, Scipius was, was Africanus. Leo Africanus wrote and said, yeah, you know, uh, the um, Mansa Musa don't want Jews in Africa. And Mansa Musa himself was a convert to Islam. He wasn't an Arab. He was he was uh, uh, he was of the African Africanoid type. And king of West Africa. And he told us that he had relatives sail off to the Americas. Or what is known as the Americas today. That's what that's what Mansa Musa told us. He had relatives that sailed off to the, to the Americas. And here's where it gets here's where it gets really interesting, folks. Those people selling off into the Americas because um What's his name? Christopher Columbus. You know, him, Christo Christopher Columbus and his writings. We found out that th it was not a mistake. They didn't just mistakenly find the Americas. They knew exactly where they were going. Christopher Columbus in his letters knew exactly where he was going. He took some Hebrews with him. Why? Because Mansa Musa told them, hey, look, there's some our relatives are over there. Christopher Col Columbus knew that took some Hebrews with him, some some Arab speaking people and some Hebrew speaking people with him over to the Americas because Mansa Musa told them. Right now, now we're looking at Prester John, Prester meaning elder, elder John, elder John in East Africa. And those Africans in the East were conquered by the Arabs. And guess where the Arabs took them? The Arabs took them. Uh, when when they were destroyed again, these Arabs took these Bantu, these these Abyssinian people to the the southern Saudi Peninsula. They took them to parts of Iraq, Iran, and India. Why do we know this? Because even in the Indian chronicles, you have Africans as kings in India. Fully recorded, folks. <clears throat> but to make this short, to get this short, because it's getting hot in here and I don't want to be in here too long. I don't want to have you guys listen to me too long either. To make this short, again, King David in Psalm 68, 31, he says that out of Egypt and Ethiopia, Abyssinia, that his descendants will be crying will be calling on the name of God that stretch that would be calling on God Amos again Amos in chapter 9 verse 7 God says that his people resemble Ethiopians 
And for this final one that you guys must see, this final one in the book of Hosea. I remember the Jewish people said that Hosea, this is one of the, this is the, the, the highest prophet. The highest prophet in the book, he's saying that in chapter 7, verse 16, they, speaking of the Israelites, they are like a deceitful bull. Their princes shall buy, fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. So the book of Hosea is telling them that since they were in confused with other gods, that the Israelites will go back and be in derision in the land of Egypt. They will go back to Egypt. And again, in chapter chapter eight of Hosea, that was chapter seven, chapter seven, verse 16. In chapter eight, we get down to verse 14 or excuse me, 13. They shall return to Egypt. So you have a God that is saying the children of Israel came out of Egypt. You hear that all the time. The children of Egypt, the children of Israel came out of Egypt. The children of Israel came out of Egypt. You hear that all the time. Well, here, one of the greatest prophets is saying that the children of e Israel will go back into Egypt. And this he's speaking in the in the stead of God. God is saying that they shall return back into Egypt here in the book of Hosea. He's not saying that they're going to return to Poland. He's not saying they're going to return to Germany. He's not saying that they're going to turn return to Romania. He's not going to he's not saying that they're going to return to Russia or any of these European places. Italy's not saying that they're going to return to any of these European places. He's saying that they're returning back to Africa. And again, we know that when they got into Egypt, they were scattered into Africa. That's what y'all need to know, folks. And once they got scattered, guess where they ended up in? They end up in the four corners of the world, just like the Bible says. Just like the Bible says. They ended up there. So we can listen to Mansa Musa when he says that his relatives went over to the Americas. We can listen to Prester John. When he said that his relatives were sold, were there were, he said that one that his relatives were Israelites, and two that they were sold. That the, the later the Arabs came and they told us that they were sold in those parts of the other worlds, in those parts of the other worlds. We can believe that story of Africa. We don't need to believe in these producers who are can't even pay a reparation. To the people that they have destroyed. Yeah. Or currently destroying right now. Yeah. With that being said. I am a Hebrew Israelite. I am a minister of peace. A conscientious objector. Hebrew Israelite out.